Hello everyone. Welcome to Testing Tuesday, as I like to call it. Uh, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to try out some things in Ubuntu as we head towards the new release, which is coming on 23rd of April, later this year. Uh, as I record this, it's the 25th of February, so not long. Uh, we'll look at the release schedule in a minute. But I wanted to showcase some of the new stuff um, and also have an opportunity to give everything a little bit of a poke and a noodle around. Uh, some of these are going to be like formal testing sessions where I'm going to wipe my system and do a clean install and uh, test things that the QA team have specifically requested be tested and other times it's going to be a kind of noodling and poking around day and today for the first one I relaxed and it's going to be a noodling and poking around kind of day if you want to see some more of these do subscribe to the channel and uh, I appreciate feedback so leave me a comment if there's anything in particular you want me to try out or anything you want to test or a particular Ubuntu flavor you want to see then let me know I'm using my trusty Lenovo ThinkPad. It's an X220 with 16 gig of RAM and an SSD. I use this for testing because it's, it's no longer my current main laptop. So it means that I can wipe it and I don't really care because it's not my primary device. Um, and I can put all manner of stuff on it. Uh, it's also sat in a docking station so I can pull the drive out and put a different drive in which makes it easier if I want to keep an install around on a disk I can swap a drive out put a different one in uh, so that's that's what, it, what we're running here now you'll notice it's not super high resolution it's not 4k or anything like that it's uh, quite an old laptop being an x220 it dates from around 2011 2012 uh, so the internal display panel is actually 1366 by 768, which is still surprisingly common. It's on the way down, but there's still a lot of people who have this resolution display. So I don't think it's a bad thing that I'm using something that's not 4K. And I appreciate all you people out there with lots of money who've bought new laptops have got 4K displays, but I won't be showing that. I'll be showing the kind of other end of the scale. I think it's important for us to look at both. So let's have a look at uh, a few things to look forward to in 2004. Now, it's worth noting, again, it is the 25th of February, and the release isn't until uh, April, so it's a couple of months away, on the 23rd of April. Uh, we always release on a Thursday, uh, and it's either party time or relaxation on the Friday or you know day one bug fixing uh, generally it's relaxation unwinding after a stressful week but uh, so we've got a couple of months to go we're back here in February and I plan to do more of these as we go through the weeks uh, to have a look at how 20, 2004 is is uh, building before the final release so uh, What's new? Uh, well, one thing that people often ask is about the kernel and uh, which kernel are going to ship with. And currently, we're on 5.4. Uh, this is apparently the LTS kernel upstream. Um, there's probably a kernel.org page here somewhere. There we go. So this is a long-term support kernel. And I believe this was chosen by the kernel team because, well, it makes sense, doesn't it? It's a long-term support release of Ubuntu 2004 is going to be supported for five years initially and then potentially another five years with extended security maintenance so uh, it makes sense for them to use a LTS kernel but the kernel team do backport stuff from newer kernels so uh, it's not like you're stuck in the past um, it's a it's an LTS kernel so there are benefits to that um what's next well one of the big things that a lot of people have uh talked about is the new theme 
Uh, we had a sprint in London. Martin wrote about this on a blog post where we got uh, some people in who've been working on the community maintained Yaru theme. Uh, I think it was previously called community theme or something like that. It's now called Yaru. Uh, and it was the default in 1910. And uh, we invited a whole bunch of people to come to London and uh, we sat around in the London office, much like this, um, and went through with a fine tooth comb uh, a lot of the feedback that we got from uh, both from senior management at Canonical, from people in the community, bug reports, from our own internal design team, and from the Euro team themselves. And you can kind of make it out on this uh, these pictures. Uh, we had a projector up with you know a big list of gotchas and things we wanted to look at. And uh, at the top of Martin's blog post, uh, he mentions here uh, the well gives a a screenshot of uh, Yaru as it looked in Ubuntu nineteen ten. And this thing here is the GTK three widget factory. You can actually launch that yourself. Three uh, widget. And it's just a an application you can use to see every possible permutation of all the different widgets in GTK, and you can see here how it how it looks, and it, you can compare side by side how 2004 looks compared to 1904, and probably the the thing that jumps out for most people probably is the color scheme has changed slightly. People who are really good at noticing stuff will see you know, all the little tiny single pixel changes here and there, but most people will probably spot stuff like the colors, like these uh, these colors are more aubergine here rather than the, the default light blue in the previous release and aubergine here rather than the green. We got some feedback that there were too many colors in use and we were possibly overusing orange as well in various places. So you know, that was part of the feedback that was uh, fed back to the uh, design team and uh, changes were made. Like I said, this is not final, two months out. Although, if you look at the uh, release schedule, where's the release schedule? I've got it here somewhere. Uh, we're currently, where are we? Um, 25th of Feb, so on the 27th is feature freeze, um, and then user interface freeze is midway through March. So we've got a little bit of time, but yeah, it would be good if we could uh, uh, get some testing on the theme and see if everything looks right in all the various applications and uh, you know all your all the stuff you use on a daily basis so this was great uh sitting around you know with designers and with developers trying to figure out exactly what uh, um, the theme should look like uh, which was really really cool um, the highlights and the accent colors were probably the things that you'll notice most um, especially if you go through the, the GTK widget factory and you go through all of these things, you'll see there still is some orange here and there, but there's nowhere near as much as there was. It was a little bit too much um, and changing, you know, so so you can see, you know, we've changed a few things so they're not quite so uh, bold and not quite so, well, basically orange. But still you have accent colors like you have up here in the close button, which helps it be distinctive and you can see that a desktop is you know Ubuntu from uh, a few feet away. Uh, the other thing that was uh, proposed during that uh, that sprint in London was a switcher. Uh, one of the things uh, a bit of feedback that we had uh, from a lot of people is that there was no straightforward way to change theme um, and I know this is a super contentious topic <laughs> for everyone uh, but uh, we wanted to make it possible for people to switch between the default themes that we ship. And so currently, as it stands, this is what it looks like. And this has only just landed in uh, Focal Fossa, which is the development code name for 2004. And you can see here, there's three options shown here. If I get a window up so you can see uh, what difference that makes. Whoops. Um, and this is the default which has light window content background and a darker header bar, which is what we call standard. And then there's a light variant, which flicks everything to light. Uh, so you still have the light window content, but you'll now have a 
light header bar if you prefer that. And then there's the dark variant, which changes the window content to be dark and keeps the header bar dark. So you can just super easily switch between them. Um, many of the other settings in here are much the same, and we've obviously inherited a whole load of changes and updates in here from the upstream going project. So that's all super. But this was something we wanted to add in because people were having to go off and install GNOME tweaks or figure out and you know do internet searches to find out how to just change their theme. And we felt it would be nice if, given we ship these three variants of the theme, it would be nice to have a way for them to use us to switch between them. Uh, so that was added. Uh, that's worth playing with and making sure that works the way you expect it to. So have a play with that in 2004. Another thing that's, uh, oh, you probably noticed this actually while we're here, uh, the icons. This came up at um, at the sprint and uh, one of the uh, design team who works at Canonical worked with one of the community design guys and they iterated on a whole bunch of options for icon, these folder icons, whether they should be, you know, plain or have gradients and how you make it really look like a folder and whether it should actually look like a folder or, you know, whether that metaphor isn't appropriate and um, and whether, you know, there's too much orange or too much aubergine and so on. So we went through a whole bunch of um, iterations on that. Again, none of this is final, but personally, I really like those uh, those icons, but I'm not a designer. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a place to give feedback for that, and that's the uh, Yaru project on GitHub. Uh, what else? Uh, so the other thing that uh, has been notable is some performance improvements. And uh, there are other things that you may not notice that happen under the covers. And I think if you want to know more about where what, what changes there are in, in 2004, what's coming down the pipe and what's already landed, actually the best place to go is to the Ubuntu discourse. Um, you can obviously install 2004 and then just you know see what's uh, what comes down the pipe with your regular updates. But uh, every week, the desktop team uh, posts updates of what they've been up to uh, on the team. And uh, if you scroll through this, you can see what each member of the team has been up to, what they've been fixing on, uh, what they've been fixing and uh, working on. Um, oh, look, uh, Robert's working on GNOME software. So that's another thing that's changed that I... Uh, I forgot to mention GNOME software has had a little refresh. Uh, so the banners look a little bit different. Uh, the way it presents applications is slightly different. So for example, if I want to install Inkscape, click on it. Um, previously, we had a little button down here where you could switch channel. If this if this was a snap, you'd, you'd switch channel and it was super undiscoverable. Um, but now it's been moved up here to the top. So now you can choose which channel uh, you want to get that application from just by choosing this little drop down, which is quite nice. So you can say, oh, I want to follow the you know latest development release, choose the edge channel, click on that, and it switches to latest slash edge. And then you can hit the install button in order to install that version. So that's a nice addition. Uh, but I noticed in um, in that post, that uh, Robert did. He's working on the snap login dialog. I suspect that's to put back in the uh, the feature that allows you to log into the store, which is useful if you've got private snaps. May in the future support paid snaps. Um, but I think that used to live up here. It was removed in an update, and I think uh, they're going to put it back in in a, in a future update. But that's cool. Ubuntu Software getting some updates there because um, it's actually surprising to some people. A lot of people actually use uh, this tool to install software not everyone uses apt on the command line so that's cool the other thing that's new in 2004 and i haven't had a chance to test yet but i think i'm going to test in a future one of these videos is uh, zsys and this builds upon the zfs work that was done to get zfs or zfs if you prefer landed in 1910 zfs is um the cool new hotness that isn't all that new. <laughs> People have been using it for ages. But the um, the the cool thing about ZSys is it enables uh, your system to take a snapshot 
when you do a system update so if you get a, a dialogue box a box that pops up that says hey you need to do your software updates and then you click the button and it does all the software updates in the background it'll do a snapshot so that in the event that the updates fail you'll be able to go back to a previously last known good and that's super useful because you know sometimes updates break you know it happens um, and this gives people a lot more um, confidence that they can push forward with their updates and they don't have to feel like if I go forward so my system's going to break because if it does you can reboot and at the grub menu you can go back to a previously last known good state I think it's still um, being worked on so um, you know the fact that you can see Jibble and I think down here Didier is also talking about ZSYS a lot down here so if you want to know what's going on with ZSYS you know here is uh, um, a good a good place to find out about it um, also uh, Daniel uh, Van Voot uh, has talked about his performance uh, updates in Gnome Shell that's always good to see both Daniel and the upstream developers and the rest of the GNOME community are working to make uh, GNOME Shell uh, faster, better, stronger, harder, or whatever you call it. And uh, that's great. So seeing things like, you know, the smoothness of animations and the speed of animations and stuff uh, improve. I know this is also a contentious issue because some people don't like this whole animation stuff. Um, but, you know, thankfully you can turn that off. It's an option that's uh, exposed in uh, Tweak, which we don't install by default, but you can, you know, you can just use Tweak to turn off animations. And when you've done that, you know, it speeds things up quite a bit. Um, so there's a lot of work that Daniel and the rest of the uh, GNOME developers have done to make things go fast, which is cool. Um, loads of other stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Updates to uh, GNOME as well with uh, new GNOME shell coming down the pipe. It's all good. So yeah, I would recommend if you want to know more about what's going on on the Ubuntu desktop, go and have a look on Discourse uh, to find out uh, what's new and improved and what people are working on. And you can get involved there and ask questions and um, talk to the team and follow the links through to bug reports and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So that's it really, just a quick video. I wanted to show off some of the things that are coming in 2004. I think we'll take a look at that uh, ZFS and ZSYS stuff a little bit later because that's, um, that's pretty cool. A bit of a game changer. Uh, next time, I think we'll do the uh, clean install experience. Uh, we'll follow the instructions on the uh, ISO tracker. So grab an ISO. I'll do a clean install because this is clearly not a clean install. Look, I've got all kinds of stuff on here i've got games and all kinds of uh, not nonsense on this system so i want to test out a clean install i'll do that next time um especially as uh, if we look at the uh, release schedule you'll see it's uh until testing week next week so it's a good time to start getting familiar with how we test the isos and then uh, do the testing around about this kind of stage here but you know we're always uh, keen on people doing uh, additional testing for Ubuntu so that it's the most polished final release when uh, April 23rd comes around. That's the idea anyway. Uh, so yeah, next time I think I'll do ISO testing of a GNOME uh, release, this uh, default no Ubuntu experience. But uh, if you're interested in me trying out any of the other flavors, because obviously we have the KDE flavor Kubuntu, the LXQ flavor Lubuntu, um, the Ubuntu is there for the XFCE fans and Ubuntu Budgie if you prefer the new lightweight Budgie desktop. If you're interested in me testing any of those, then leave a comment below. Uh, as always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next one of these. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.